Overseer's Log, south of Vault 76. I, I knew this wasn't going to be the Appalachia I remembered, but... Mutated animals? Haywire bots? No people so far. We have to be ready to rebuild in... What I can confirm is... Hostile territory. Fortunately, Vault Tech was prepared. You see this? The cooking station, the stash box, the workbenches, all built with the camp. You need a home base out there. The construction and assembly mobile platform is designed to give you one. Just add resources, planning, and a little elbow grease. When you move your camp, everything you've built is stored, ready to be placed back down in the new area. Use this to establish a foothold whenever you're in unfamiliar territory. I've left my camp behind so you can use it. I know I'm breaking my own advice by not taking it with me. But after seeing Appalachia for myself, I need to make sure every resident of 76 has a safe haven they can start from. I'll make do without it. If it's still standing, the town of Flatwoods is further down this road. Find me there. This is the Overseer, signing off. Glad to hear vault Tech actually took care of some of their people. You hear these rumors, right, about them just throwing folks to the wolves. Here's some rations and a fancy suit. Good luck. Well, don't you worry that smooth little face of yours. You are in good company now. Because around here, we look after one another. Now, what can I do for you? Allergies. Learn the hard way. I can't stand within 10 feet of a strawberry. <laughs> Come on, man. That's a joke. Truth is, I was outside on doomsday. Now, you see, I drove security, and I was coming back from a pickup in the truck when I feel this rumble, and it quiet, then a whole lot less quiet, and the truck was hit with this wind, and it was like someone dropped a hurricane on it. I can hear it battering the truck. Bang, 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 like it's got a grudge against it. And then I unlocked the door and into the back, and then... Bang, I wake up, man, and it's crazy. Somehow, in the back of the truck, alive and kicking. All it cost me was my skin and any opportunity for someone liking me for anything other than my lovely personality. And that was the day I became, well, they call us schools. Not the most flattering name, but still, beats being vaporized. I mean, it's got its advantages. Main one is that radiation rolls off me like water off a duck's ass. Can stride through a blast zone like it's a spring breeze. Also means I can survive in situations that would turn a normal person into a TV dinner. The major downside? Well, shit, you're looking at it, right? Head to toe disfiguration. There's also, well, you might have seen them. Not all ghouls are saying. Not sure how it happens. Why some ghouls lose their minds and others don't. But ever since I turned, there's always this nagging feeling just at the back of my mind that I will have to feast on humans! Seriously? Seriously? Nothing? Shit, I thought it was funny. Overall, though, being a ghoul makes bag. Can't say I'd recommend it as a lifestyle choice.
don't have one. I'm an independent operator. When these folks need a hand or got an errand that involves running into radiation, they come to me. Rads? Yeah, <laughs> they don't bother me anymore. In exchange, Duchess lets me drink. It doesn't bother me too much about my tap. Really, about the best sort of setup a guy in my situation could ever ask for. Of course, sitting around looking like hamburger ain't all I do. Plans work out, I'll have all the drinking money I could ever need. But that ain't what you came here to talk about. Was there something else? I did, and your eyes still working, kids. That's the reason you're bringing up the obvious. Look, the world's hard now. Betty will learn that lesson real fast. Listen, friend, you happen to be talking to the exact right person to fix your predicament. But if I'm going to help you, I want something in return. All right, listen, I got this plan. You're going to help me get rich. See, the folks who made it big off the gold rush, they weren't the prospectors. They were the folks that sold them their shovels. Now, I don't do shovels. What I collect is knowledge. I can go all sorts of places you folks with your rad sucking skin can't. So, I'm selling what I've got between my ear holes, and you're gonna test it for me. I made these hollow tips. Now this sets all the info I dug up about that camp doohickey you Volters got. All I'm asking is you give them a listen and let me know what you think. You will? Oh, thank you. I mean, <clears throat> thanks. Just come back once you've taken them out for a test drive. Now, is there anything else you wanted to chat about? Some other time then. talking about your camp. Now, former vault resident or someone who killed a vault resident, let's start off with the basics. Placing your camp. When plugging down your camp, C-A-M-P, that's an acronym, for the first time, remember to, oh crap, where did that, uh, oh here we go. Remember to take the lay of the land. Consider the grade of the terrain, general defensibility and proximity to your surroundings. Could that cliff edge be used to protect your flank? You bet your chops it could. Once you've found the perfect spot, it's time to move on to the best part of working with your camp. Construction! Construction can be an intricate process, so a steady hand and an eye for detainment <clears throat> details. Damn, I had to get and eye for details are a must. You should take a moment to familiarize yourself with the camp's patented intuitive construction interface. But don't worry, we'll cover construction in gory detail in the next of Headmaster Mort's edutapes. So long, Pitcher Chops. Come on, Mort, what, what, what was that? Hello, dedicated listeners. Welcome back to Headmaster Mord's Edutapes. Today, in this second tape, we are talking construction. Now, the first step of construction is... Wait, what? Is that soda? Soda's red, right? Wait, oh. <clears throat> electing. First, electing what you're going to build. Once you've made that election, it's just three easy questions to construction success. One, is the location I've selected going to work for an object of the size and shape I'm building? Two, have I read the schematics thoroughly? And three, do I have all the required materials to 
Who the hell bled on my notes? Saul! If I find out it was you, you're gonna bleed on... What, whatever. Just finish work. Short on materials? Loot the local junkyard, mills, and warehouses for parts. Missing a critical schematic? Your local vendors might have just what you're looking for. And on that note, this has been Headmaster Mort's Edu Dave's Edu Dave's. See you again soon. Solomon, so help me this better be damn. Where are you hiding? Welcome back, lovely listeners, to Headmaster Mort's final tape in the camp series. Powering your camp. After listening to the second tape, you should already be well trained, enough to build a generator. If you haven't yet done so, I'll wait. Do, 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 ah. I do, 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 ah, screw it. All right, I, I'll assume you nailed it. Now, generators are the heart of your camp power system. Once your generator is built, all you need to do is connect it to the object that needs power with the wire. Though, be aware, your wire will need a clear, unobstructed path to establish and maintain a direct connection. Some objects, however, like simple light bulbs, do not require a direct connection. All you need to do is run a wire from your generator to a power pylon. Place the power pylon near your lights, then voila! Let there be light! Well, this has been Headmaster Mort's Camp Construction Holotapes. Please check back with Headmaster Mort himself at The Wayward to learn more about his other exciting courses, including... Mort, can I still eat this? And Mutations. Am I a monster now? And thanks again for listening. Ha! Nailed it! Oh, hey there. Looking forward to hearing what you thought of those tapes. Now, what'd you want to discuss? Did you now? What did you think? Ha. Huh. Huh. If I needed smoke blowing up my ass, I'd sit on a campfire, okay? Seriously, what'd you think? I mean, yeah, that's what I thought, too. I, I figured I'd do a couple more batches. I mean, I'll have this thing down. Headmaster Mort will be a household name before you know it. Thanks for being honest. Now, was there something else I could do for you? Don't have one. I'm an ind- Rads? Yeah, in exchange, Duchess. Really? How about- Well, at least until the- Art class was never my wheelhouse. Just remember that once you've got this sign on its feet.
I'm thinking about joining up, getting in on the ground floor. How about you? Think I'll make the cut? If I get a gun and a nice suit of power armor, you can sign me right up. Horse to the ferals don't get you. Rad's will. Foundation might be coming along, but we got a lot more work to do. Gotta wait a whole nother hour for that food to reheat.
place has a lot of potential. Raiders come snooping around, they're gonna regret it. to make quota in backwoods, I mean flatwoods, so, uh, be difficult given the uh, financial situation around here, just need to remind them of our friends the Chinese, uh, I'll be back on the plane to Ipswich within a fortnight, uh, gather it'll be the bench press today. Flatwoods, 
is brought to you by Sugar Bombs, the breakfast cereal with explosive great taste and 100% of the recommended daily allowance of sugar. Get your morning started right with Sugar Bombs. Our tale begins on a fateful night when a young pioneer scout, Red Fisher, finds himself in quite the predicament, having taken a spill and fallen into a dark place. Uh. Where am I? Jack? Bip? Mr. Bailey? Can anybody hear me? I can hear you. Who's there? I, I can't see you. Me? My name's Sally. What's yours? Fred. Are you okay, Fred? I think so. My head's a little woozy. Must have hit it when I fell. Oh, no. Did you get lost, too? Well, sort of. What I mean is that I was camping with my scout troop by the lake near Flatwoods. There were these lights kind of dancing in the sky. Me? I guess. Anyway. We heard some weird noises, and the guy's double dog dared me to go look, so I did. All by yourself? You're really brave. Shucks. Thanks. I followed the noises to an entrance of an old mine. It smelled awful there, like rotten eggs, but worse. Suddenly, there was this bright light shining down on me. I was super scared and ran to the mine to hide, but everything felt strange. Like, my feet weren't even touching the ground. Everything went black, and I woke up here in the dark. That'll happen to me, too. We'll just do what my dad says. When you stray to lost your foot, do what's best and stay put. They said they'd bring him soon. There are other people here? A very good question indeed. Tune in next time to find out the answer in the chilling conclusion of Who Goes There? The Strange Encounter in Flatwoods. Survivors of this garbage dump. I'm Sophie, and this is my stupid survivor story. This dump shit go. Oh, yeah. Before the bombs, I was a librarian, and now I can read everything all the time. Whee! Look at me! I'm lucky. Wait, no, no. Maybe. As one of those farmers who prepared for the end times. Some sort of religious thing. Yeah, yeah, that's right. No, no, I, I got it. I was a sweet little kid and lived off some cat food containers in a super duper mart for months near my parents' rotting carcasses. Nobody came. Nobody. I learned how to deal. You should too. 
the responders are a joke. Nobody helps anybody anymore. Get a grip. If you're not a total idiot, you'll get out of this dump before the responders get you killed. Leave the sick behind. We're better off. Trust me. Whiny babies can stay here and play make-believe, but anyone with half a brain will go up to the mountains and drop the dead weight. Delbert already tried to stop me. Sorry to say nobody will be around to teach you how to eat shit now, Flatwoods. Bye, suckers. Love always, Sophie. Survivors of this garbage. I press the button. Just talking to this? Oh, uh, yeah, am I loud enough? Okay. Oh. Hi. What do you want me to say exactly? So just talk about how you got here, and maybe a little bit about your life. This is a historic document. Go ahead, Tabitha. Okay. 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 So, well, thanks. Ah, uh, okay. <sighs> I've been sober for nine days. Um, well, he looks after I got me. here nine days She's ago. the best guardian a girl can have. My name is, is Tabitha. And this is my story. I just found out about everything. The war, the bombs, I... I just, I just realized this was, uh, <laughs> really happening. For years, I thought the chems were playing tricks with my mind, hurting my brain. Ever. Every time I'd come out of my haze long enough to look for food, I'd find more chems and, well, they kept going. And I kept seeing madness. But, um, I would have been wandering around, fighting giant rats and eating garbage, if not for the responders. They're... They're good folks. That doc in the church, um... got me some meds that are helping out a lot. And they have group therapy meetings. But listen, um... You should avoid the mountains. They'll just get you mixed up. Get you doing things you don't want to do. Hurting people mostly. Where there are so many chems up there, I spent too long there and I hurt people. I couldn't think right. I, I couldn't. Okay, so it's okay. We're here for you. Yeah, 
down. Taking it. When I feel better, I'm going out west though. Getting out of this place. Getting out, getting away from the cams, all of this. I feel better every day, but you know, years of cams, years of rats, years of something been in the mud. Hi there. Are you here for the responder training? Overseer's Log, town of Flatwoods. My god. There's no one here. The old tavern, the church. People were using them for shelter, but they're gone. Mutations we expected. But there's something else. A disease. I was attacked by... Well, it used to be a person. But it had these green, glowing lesions, and its voice, angry, tortured. We are one. One what? Whatever happened here is beyond anything we expected. This town is really nice and we expected a lot. Before they were wiped out, the survivors called themselves the Responders. Looks like they were made of firefighters, police, emergency medical staff. 
They even have an automated system to teach people about treating water, food, survival. I'm doing their tests, and you should too. I know it's even worse than we imagined, but someone's got to know where the missile silos are and how to secure them. The responders are the best lead we have. This is the Overseer, signing off. asked me if I would talk about um, how I got here. She asked everybody, so I, I said okay. My, name, my name's Colonel, and I'm 13 years old. I, I just wanted to say I'm sorry. I'm sorry for everything. Um, the bombs and the, the messed up people and, and the cows with two heads and all of it. I was bad. Just bad. I, I cheated on my spelling test. I, I can't Chip Wilkins in the shins until he cried. I pushed Rosie McCloy down the stairs. Um, I, I cut holes in the bottom of all the gym shorts and I put glue in the mashed potatoes in the cafeteria. I told Harold Newell to eat 10 dead flies a day in order to grow muscles and uh, I put new Coca Cola in the rack cage water bottles at the pet store. And um, I just wanted to say I'm sorry about everything. My dad said if I wasn't this way, the bad things would happen. I haven't seen Daddy since the bombs, and I guess he left because of that too. It's okay. I'm, I'm trying to be good now, though. I'm, I'm not old enough to be a volunteer, but Dasa said I could help collect food and water, so I'm getting better. I promise. And, oh, Daddy, if you're listening, I, I promise I won't be bad anymore, so you will come back now. Okay. Okay.
It sure is great to see living human beings again. That overseer lady said more people would be coming. It's nice to meet you. With smarts and a little luck, you'll do just fine out there. While you're here, why not grab a stem bag or two? Volunteer, if you need supplies, Bobbitt's got you covered. Make yourself at home. I did. Are you here for the responder training? Then you're not alone. A lot of people come here because of that radio message the responders left. That's what brought me here too. At first I was planning to just do the training and move on, but honestly, I kind of like it here. I really enjoy meeting all the people that pass through and hearing their stories. Wait a minute. Are you one of those people who was in Vault 76? I knew it! I could tell just by looking at you. I've always thought that life in a vault must be so amazing, with the robots and all the machines and having everything you need every day. Best of all, you're safe, which, let me tell you, is a thing us outsiders very rarely get to feel. Though I guess you're one of us now, so that's all in the past for you. Of course. I know how hard it can be out there. I just made up some stim packs. Here, you can have these. Give yourself an injection when you're hurt, and they'll heal you right up. Me? There's not much to tell, really. I came in with Paige and the rest, and stayed up at Foundation for a while. It was nice. But eventually I wanted to go my own way, you know? Get out and see some places I've never seen, figure out who I am. When I heard the message on the radio about Flatwoods, I was curious to meet the responder, so I made my way here. I decided to stay here and see what else I could learn. That's pretty much my story. 
It's up in the Savage Divide, which is what they call the mountains to the east. There are maybe a dozen settlers up there, though people always come and go, so it changes. Honestly, life is pretty good there. It's a community, and everybody does their part to help. He's the closest Foundation has to a leader, I guess. I never got to know him real well, but he always seemed like a decent guy. Honest, reliable, cares about the people, that kind of stuff. Okay, what is it? I found it in one of the houses. It fits great, and it's really comfortable and pretty durable, too. I'd also be lying if I said it didn't have some sentimental value for me. I've admired the responders ever since I first heard about them. What they stood for, helping people no matter what. That was really important. Yeah, there's a couple of places around here that qualify as interesting. At least to me. The Agricultural Research Center is infested with feral ghouls and homicidal robots. But you can find some good scrap in there if you're up to it. The New River Gorge Resort to the east is the same story. Maybe, minus the robots. No problem. Chloe's my pet. Or maybe I'm hers. <laughs> 